pretty good question, pretty cool. right? I think, yeah, I think um, in all honesty, Pete, I would probably give a slight edge to Oregon. I think their defense is a little is a little bit better. I mean, okay. that I mean, but that that's basically even I'm looking at the FPI numbers. That's like uh, that's like a, a two point difference. That's a toss up. I'd probably lean Oregon slightly on a yeah. slightly better defense, and you know I'm not totally convinced of that, but that'd be where I'd lean right now. How about you? Yeah, I would probably say Ducks by a field goal. Um, but I do think, like, you know, if those teams played 10 times, you know, one would win six and one would win four or something like yeah. that. Like, it's, I think those teams are are fairly equal in some ways. I think, you know, both have pretty good offensive lines. Um, and, uh, you know, TCU has much better offensive skill on the outside. You know, Oregon's got a little more pop maybe on their defensive ends. Uh, you know, different quarterbacks, right? Um, mm -hmm. one is really evolved and both have really evolved and played well. Right. I mean, Max Duggan didn't start this year. You forget against Colorado and then came in the second half and they just, you know, absolutely just started this blitzkrieg of a season from, uh, from that point on. So, yeah, I think two, uh, two, two really, uh, two really interesting teams. Um, one stat that I, that I found interesting is that I think Oregon has only given up like one sack this year. Um, it's something, it's something pretty remarkable, you know, they, they've had, yeah, they've literally given up one, one sack this year. So I think that just speaks to the soundness of the operation, right? If you have a line that that means you have a great offensive line, you have a great scheme that's making sure the quarterback is protected. That means you have a veteran quarterback who's making line calls and adjustments to be sure, you know, free guys are getting picked up and he's not getting, I just think that is a high compliment to just the soundness of where their offense is that there is only there is only one sack and that in, in a lot of ways that's going to keep you in a lot of games um you know moving uh moving forward so i i thought that was just a really a really interesting window into the uh into the ducks uh totally agree and if the ducks defense is a difference maker in the big picture as you start evaluating them against other teams it might well be tested um saturday night by washington who very quietly brings in the nation's leading passer and Michael Penix hmm. Jr. and some dangerous receivers and, you know, a team that's had a really good season also under a first-year coach in, in Kalen DeBoer. They would love nothing better than to spoil the season. Historically, uh, Washington has looked down its nose at Oregon, you know, sort of perceiving itself to be of a – a higher level bastion of academia than, than the ducks. And then in recent years with Oregon's success and the Nike money from Phil Knight and the flashy uniforms and the trips to the playoff, although Washington has one trip to the playoff, you know, all of those, all of those things have sort of tilted the more recent scales of attention, but that rivalry is still intense and bitter and dates back to, uh, dates back to Washington aligning against Oregon to keep them out of the Rose Bowl in the 40s, you know, in, in a vote. You know, they they aligned and allegedly lobbied Montana to vote with them uh, so that uh, so that California would go to the Rose Bowl rather than Oregon. And so that was for the 48 season, 49. So there, the old timers are still bugged by that. There's the great Kenny Wheaton, uh, pick six that they just simply called the pick that sort of turned the fortunes of Oregon football in the nineties when Washington was a powerhouse and they were going, going in to win an Austin stadium. They still played on the video board, uh, you know, before, before the game there. So this is a deep seated rivalry that's important to both. And if Washington could come in and turn that thing upside down, uh, there would be plenty of, delight in seattle over that turn of events for sure thanks for watching espn on youtube for live streaming sports and premium content subscribe to espn plus